Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of So Tell Us Time. Today's gonna be a lot of fun because today we're gonna be talking about your favorite word on the planet, especially in business. It's called no. Everybody loves to hear no. You call somebody up and you're like, hey, Mr. So-and-so, this is so-and-so from Bob's Carpet Cleaning and we'd love to, no, click. And you hang up and you're like, oh my gosh. In fact, a lot of times when people are thinking about doing sales, they struggle with it because they're afraid of that word no. They're like, oh, it's so scary. And they don't wanna deal with being rejected. Yep. From from a young age, we're we're scared of rejection, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it goes all the way back to dating. <laughs> <laughs> we're scared to ask that person out because we're afraid of being rejected, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So we 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 have this innate fear of rejection and the word no. And so in business, when we're trying to get out there and we're trying to do sales, we just get super scared of it. But the funny thing about it is we're going to change your mind. Today, we're going to teach you why the word no is something to get excited about. It's really exciting. It's really fun. Once you know this secret thing, then you you go, I love the word no. It's the best thing ever. And there isn't, there, there's one person on this planet that is a phenomenal salesman. And I can't think of anybody better to talk about the word no and the law of averages than our special guest that we're going to have on today. In fact, this person has been a salesperson for over 50 years. They have been top of their game for over 50 years. They wrote a book on how to have success selling yellow pages. So that tells you how old they are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> are the yellow pages even around anymore? <laughs> so they wrote a book. They flew all over. They were flown all over the country and they were hired to train and teach these um, yellow page sales guys how to be better salesmen, right? right? Absolutely. Phenomenal, phenomenal person. And we're gonna add them to the call now so you guys will get to see who our special guest is. Let's see if they answer. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Hello, this is Ron. Oh, is this Ron Howard? Yes, it is. Mr. Ron Howard, I wanna be in your next movie. Perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, it's not that, Ron Howard. I think you're a little bit older than that, Ron Howard, aren't you? That's right. He has my name. <laughs> he stole your name. But you're better looking, so that's okay, and you have a full head of hair. That's right. He has none. <laughs> he has none. That's right. And unfortunately, the little he has is red, so. No, <laughs> don't take offense, anybody out there. Just teasing, just teasing. All right, Ron, so we wanted to bring you on today. You've been in sales for over 50 years. You're a speaker, author, trainer. You've been flown all over the country where you taught and trained the salespeople how to be better salesmen. And you were always the, the number one salesman in every company that you ever worked for. So today we want to talk about the law of averages. Can you give us a little bit, we're talking about, to give you a background, we're talking about the word no. People get scared about the word no. They get, they're afraid of rejection, but you actually taught us that the word no is amazing. You taught us to love that word no. Can you give us a little bit more information about that? Yeah, this uh, actually started back when I was selling World Book Encyclopedia, which doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, you just dated yourself. It was bad enough dinosaur. that we talked about the yellow pages, but now <laughs> you're talking about the world book. Uh, for our younger listeners, that's these books that you used to open up and you could see all about the world. <laughs> Dinosaurs and all sorts of fun things. It was like the internet, but on paper. Yeah, it was the internet, but on paper. It was internet on paper and Troy read it from A to Z. That's right. I did. That's why he's so smart. Stupid <laughs> YouTube right. made me dumb. <laughs> yeah. So when I was back in there and I was selling it, the, the problem was is that you would it was all door to door. And you would go out and knock on 80 to 100 doors in a day and you would get 70% no's. And that's amazing. No, no. 80 to 100 doors a day. I can tell you right now, we have listeners that have literally never knocked on a door in their life and they're running businesses. <laughs> We've all, in fact, all of us, just so you know, everyone, Troy, Ron, and I have all knocked doors for jobs before. That's right. We have. And so the, uh, when I worked for World Book, I went up through the ranks and became a manager and a trainer. And in training people, the thing that I found was that a no, you would get more excited. The problem was is that when people were out selling, they would get a no, 
and they get a little more discouraged. They get a no, and they get another discouragement, and they get no, and pretty soon, they didn't want to go to the next place because they knew they were going to get a no. Right. And they would get so discouraged, they would quit and go home. And what I try to show them, there's a law of averages. And so if you take a coin and you flip it, you're going to get a heads or a tails. And if you do it long enough, it's always going to be 50-50. You might get 10 heads in a row, but you're going to get 10 tails in a row. Somewhere along the line. So what you do is the first thing you do is you figure out what your law of averages did. Now, when I first started the World Book, it was like about one out of ten. So every demonstration that I gave that I got a no on, I would have no nine no's and one yes. Okay. And then the goal was is to be able to get better at that instead of having one out of ten down to one out of seven, one out of five. And what I did is I kept a chart, and it would show how many times I gave a demonstration. And I kept track on how many doors and everything, but I'm just going to talk about demonstrations because that's where the money's at. Yeah. Is every time I gave a demonstration, when I sold something, let's say that it was worth $100. So when I sold it, I made a hundred bucks. Well, if I had a one out of five demonstrations, if I sold one out of, when I gave five gems and I sold one, that means that every time I gave a demonstration, it was worth 20 bucks. Gotcha. And so when I would go into a house and somebody would tell me no, I would look at him and smile and say, thank you. <laughs> and walk out thinking, I just made 20 bucks. That's right. That's a great way. I hope that some people, I mean, people's minds should just be blown right now, right? You're taking the psychology that we've all been told for, since we were little kids, that no is bad. No, 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 right? That's bad. And you just turned it into something good. Every time you got told no, you made money, which yeah. is exciting. That's well, amazing. What really got exciting is when you get your law of averages so the way to make more money is do better than one out of five. You do one out of four, one out of three. I got to one out of two. So I knew for every time I gave two demonstrations, I would sell one. But the thing was is that when I – I don't care. Even if you're doing one out of two, I would have spots on my card where I had 12 no's in a right. row. Right. That's when everybody would go home. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> I was so dang excited. I couldn't wait to get to the next one. Right. Because I knew I had six guesses coming. That's right. right. You know, and you know, what's no, funny is I want to kind of roll back a little bit on that. Uh, when everybody else went home, you stayed out there. In fact, I do recall a time when Karen Howard, your wife, told me a story about how you weren't allowed to come home until you hit certain numbers, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you, especially during contests and stuff. Yeah. I came home one time. She says, what'd you get today? And I said, none. She goes, well, get back out there. <laughs> get back out there. <laughs> That's right. You can go sleep in your car, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come home until you got something good. That's right. That's awesome. And you know what was really, really interesting was that I found that it wasn't so if, if I was going to, in fact, I'll share this. This is how to have a good day every day. If you were going to start at 9 o'clock, and if I start at 9, 10, I'm now late. Yeah. And the whole day, I'm running behind. But if I start at 10 minutes to 9, I'm now early. I'm ahead of the game. Yeah, It's a mind game. And it's the same way with quitting. Most people quit at five o'clock. Yep. If they quit at ten minutes to five, they're a quitter. Yep. They quit early. I would go to five ten, and, and it happened every single time almost. Five ten, I'd get in to give a damn a demonstration, and all of a sudden, I'd begin, and it would be thirty minutes on the demonstration, thirty forty five minutes, and so it would run. But it was it wasn't until after that five o'clock mark. Yes. When most people were quitting, I was doing that little extra mile, and so I went the extra mile. And even if I didn't, I went the extra mile. So every day, I was a winner to start the game, and I was a winner because I went a little extra 
And by doing that, most of my sales would end up towards that over the five o'clock thing. And I would go home with orders in my pocket. Yeah, and isn't that amazing? Because people's mindset, right? Sales is a mindset. And people's mindsets really shape their future and they shape, you know, and we're, we're going to actually do a podcast about the law of attraction. Troy and I already talked about this as well, but it's funny how you attract the things that you think about and the way that you focus on things. And so that funny thing of like nine to five, right? So you start 10 minutes before nine and you would end five, uh, 10 minutes after nine or f five, sorry, 10 minutes after five, right? So you're putting in that little extra effort and it turned you into a phenomenal salesman. And obviously there's a lot of other things, but if you just think about the mindset behind that for a second, if everybody else is clocking in at nine or a little late, which is what usually happens, and they're clocking out a little before five or right at five, they're the norm. So by you coming in 10 minutes early and staying 10 minutes late, you now are above the normal. You're the cream of the crop just by doing these two simple little things, right? Absolutely. Exactly. I, you know, the, the thing is, is that when people get a no, and that's what your whole subject about this time was, is that they begin to get discouraged. Yeah. And every time they get another no and another no, and pretty soon, they're going home. Yeah. Nobody loves them. You might as well go home and eat worms. What the heck? <laughs> that term just, I mean, that, you know, that, that saying just dated you as well. <laughs> <laughs> This is so true. I'm old. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm hey. old enough to be your dad. That's true. You are old <laughs> enough to be my dad. Wouldn't that be a thing if we all said sensational and took after you, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, well, Troy, do you have any questions for Ron? No, I think you covered the topic just great. It was awesome. Okay. Well, hey, let's all give Ron a big round of applause. Thank you, Ron. You're amazing. We appreciate you coming on to the show. And we'll let you get back to your busy day of, what is it now, retirement? Yeah, I think he's playing retirement Oculus. Playing <laughs> Oculus. <laughs> playing Oculus. That's right. Hey, that, I mean, look, half of our, our listeners just said, Oculus, that's awesome. He plays Oculus. Yeah. He's the Oculus King. So he's been around a long I time. I more zombies every day than you can do. I mean, you know. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, we'll let you get back Thank to you your Thank you for having zombies. me on the show, guys. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you later. You bet. Bye now. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. Well, that's pretty exciting. That's pretty neat. It, I hope that your mind shifted with that. Troy, what do you want to talk about out of that? Because we got the law of averages. We actually he jumped in a little bit into kind of the mindset as well. So I'd like to kind of go over a little bit of that. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, Ron did a great job covering a lot of that. We talked about, you know, the law of averages, which he talked about. Basically, you know, you got to figure out your numbers. How many, you know, how many demonstrations or how many proposals do you have to do before you close a sale? And then, so if that's one out of 10, that means if you want to get 10 sales, then you got to you got to do 100 demonstrations. Really yeah. simple math, right? So the first thing you need to do is do the math. Yeah. Start tracking it. So how many, you know, like we just talked about, and that's really simple simple to do. You can do that on paper, you know, a spreadsheet, however you want to do it, but start doing the math so that you know your numbers. And then the next thing is do the work. Yeah. And by do the work, what we mean by that is you need to now increase the leads that you're going through, you yeah. know, the demonstrations that you're giving, the proposals that you're sending out mm -hmm. and see if your math is true. Yeah. Right. Because if you if you close one out of 10 and now all of a sudden you start doing 100 demonstrations in a month. Yeah. You should get 10 sales out of that. That's right. right. So, you know, test it by actually doing the work. And like he said, doing the work means showing up early, staying late. Yes. Doing more than everybody else so that you are the successful one. Well, you know, what's funny is I was just talking to a friend the other day, a good friend, very successful business owner. He's awesome. But during this whole you know, pandemic that we've been living through and this crazy life that's been going on in 2020, he was like, man, you know, things have been so tight and they've just been, you know, this and that. And he's kind of him and hot about it. And he goes, I've done everything. I have done everything, Trevor. I don't know what else to do to get more sales. And I says, really? I, well, I would challenge you on that. And he says, what do you mean you challenge me on that? And he goes, if you don't know I haven't done everything. I says, well, I would bet you haven't done something before. <laughs> and he says, well, what would that be? And I said, it's something. It's old school. It's old school, okay? I said, you are not desperate. He says, I'm desperate. No, I am desperate. I said, no, you're not desperate. I, I guarantee you're not. And he says, well, all right, prove me wrong then. And I said, how many doors have you knocked on this week? How many doors have you knocked on today? How many doors have you knocked on this month? Knocked on doors? I said, yeah. 
a desperate man would be out walking down the street, knocking on doors and selling, trying to sell. And he's like, oh, I've never walked and knocked on doors. No, I've never done that. I said, then you're not a desperate man. I said, because I guarantee, I said, you are a phenomenal salesman. People love you. You got a shining personality. You're like a big teddy bear. Everybody just wants to hug you when they see you. And if they're lucky enough to hug you, then they get to feel that warmth and you're an awesome hugger. So I said, I know for a fact you would sell like crazy. And I said, but you haven't done that. And he goes, well... Yeah, you're right. I mean, I maybe I guess I'm not that desperate because I'm not going to go <laughs> knock doors. That would suck. <laughs> and I says, all right, well, just realize when you come to me next time and you say I'm desperate, my first question is going to be how many doors have you knocked? Right. Because it works. It's a sales tactic. But again, it's the numbers. You, you heard Ron. He would go through 80 to 100 doors a day, 80 to 100 doors a day. Oh my gosh, there's people that I guarantee have never knocked on uh, one single door and two phone calls. So we went from knocking doors, you know, yep. you know, Troy, Ron and I all knocked doors. Then we got into different jobs that it was picking up the phone and making yep. calls. And I remember, I mean, man, I would make calls and I would make hundreds of calls a day because you know what would happen? People, no, 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 no. But Ron showed me, track it, track it. So I would sit there and I would track it and I got my numbers down. And with telesales, it can be really tough. And especially what we were doing, it was really tough at the time. And this was years and years ago. But I, my numbers were huge. I had to go through like 50 no's to get to like one yes or one maybe. I was actually just trying to get to maybes like, hey, let's have a conversation <laughs> down the road. But again, I knew my numbers and I knew it was profitable and it was awesome. And it made me get excited. Just like Ron, I was like, for me, it was like every no is worth a dollar, right? I was like, all right, I just made another dollar, you know? <laughs> and so then I, when I was adding it up and I was like, well, hey, I get paid, you know, at the time doing these calls, it was like 15 bucks an hour. But I was like, I could, I could add up. And be like, oh, now I'm making 16 bucks. Now I just made 17 bucks. Now I just made 18 bucks. Now all of a sudden I was making 30 bucks an hour because not really, but really, because yeah. I was, they weren't paying me 30 bucks an hour, but I was actually making that 30 bucks an hour because I knew my nose. I knew my numbers, right? Yep. So it was really exciting. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, exactly. And then the final thing is improve your average. And Ron touched on that real quick where he talked about how you do, you know, it was a hundred and then it was yeah. 10 and then five, you know, he'd close one out of every five and then one out of every two. So once you've got your numbers figured out and you know what they are, now you look at, okay, now how can I improve that? So that I can go from one out of every five to one out of every four. Yep. And a couple of great ways to do that is work on your presentation. Yeah. What can you do in your presentation to improve it? you know, so that people will buy, yeah. you know, and there's lots of different techniques that we've, we've talked about in different podcasts, you know, so definitely go back and listen to those. Um, but what can you work on in your presentation? I'm going to give you one real quick solution, which is really simple. Include social proof in your presentations, yeah, absolutely. in your proposals, right? Not very, not hard to do, <laughs> right? I mean, and it's, and it's easier today than ever before. Like we have clients that are using video reviews, that they're showing the videos in their presentations. Yeah. I remember, I actually learned this technique from Ron back in the 90s when we were both <laughs> selling yellow page ads. Yep. And you're like, wait, what kind of social proof was that? Ron literally had a notebook that he would get people to write letters, business owners that had bought ads yeah. in the yellow page you know, book. And then uh, they, he would have them write a letter saying, you know, yeah, this is what it did for my business. And he had a whole binder full of these letters. And that's what he would do when someone's like, well, I don't know. And I don't know if this works. He'd be like, boom, check it out. Yeah, Here's these. all your competitors and everybody in town. And here's what they say about us. That's right. So that was his form of social proof back in the nineties. And it worked. They were yeah. like, oh, and the best thing was, is when you had one of their competitors in there, and they're like, oh, Jim's doing this? <laughs> I hate Jim. All right, how big of an ad did he buy? Well, yeah. I'm buying twice as big as Jim. Absolutely. Right? So social proof has been making people more money for the beginning of social proof ever yes. since it started, right? Absolutely. So that's what one of the things you can do to improve your average. And of course, continue to track it. Right. So, you know yeah. what it's worth. All right. So let's go on to the homework, Trevor. Yeah. Sadly, my friends, we have made it to the homework stage. <laughs> Our time with you is up. We're all sad. We, you know, we're all we know that you love spending time with us and we love spending time with you. But for today's episode, we are done. So for homework today, 
You need to start tracking your numbers moving forward. I know, I get it. We say that all the time, track the numbers, <laughs> track the numbers, almost every episode we do. But really knowing your numbers is really how you're going to, in each piece of your business, I hope you can see this, all of these pieces come together to make that yummy uh, pie, right? Whatever pie you like, all the ingredients come together. But how you, have you noticed the theme that in each piece, it's all about your numbers and yeah. tracking your numbers. So you want to start tracking your numbers and let's help, you know, have you determine how many no's you need to get to get to a yes. And then from there, you want to try to improve those numbers. And understand, this is not just phone calls. This is not knocking on the door. This is in your online advertising, PPC, right. mailers, anything. You want to track it, see how many no's it is, right? Because everybody who clicks on or sees your, let's say ads, everyone who sees your ad but doesn't click, that's a no. Everybody who clicks but doesn't buy, that's a no, Yep. right? Mailers, you mail out so many mailers, you only get so many calls from that. Everybody else that didn't call, that's a no. So you, you just translate that into the different types of marketing that you do. So start doing that today. Make sure that you guys are tracking, have a little notebook or anything like that and keep track of those numbers and find out how many no's you have to get in order to get to a yes. And then you can change your mindset and then you can get excited about your no's because you will actually know how much money you're getting paid per no. And actually I'm gonna give him an extra credit assignment too because I just thought about this. All right, so not only do you need to know your numbers, but for extra credit this week, what I want you to do is anybody in your company that is selling you should have them listen to this podcast yes. this week. Yes. So, the, you know, we don't want just you to have the information. If you have sales right. guys, they need to listen to the podcast this week and they need to start tracking their numbers. Yep. Our sales guys, they report every <laughs> single week yes. their numbers in front of all the other sales guys. Yes, right. Right? So everybody knows everybody's yeah. close rate every single week. Right. So you need to have your guys listen to this podcast and start tracking it as well. You know what's fun too? It's fun to see when the underdog sales guys <laughs> start to overtake the big dogs in it. And you, I mean, man, it lights a fire in those big dogs and all of a sudden they start cranking sales out. So if you have a team that's getting stagnant, doing this and having them report in front of everybody is an amazing way to do it. All right, guys. Well, we had a lot of fun with you. We're at 22 minutes, so Oof, we've got to end, it. end it. We, we are sorry for that, but we will see you guys on the next episode of So Tell Us Time.